Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this episode, we're gonna go over a couple of exercises that will allow you to open up the shoulders and go more into shoulder flexion. So not only will it give you more shoulder flexion, but also you'll feel this in the thoracic part of your spine. Now, for a lot of people that are tight in the shoulders, you'll probably also notice they'll be quite tight in the spine as well, especially thoracic extension. So for those of you that spend eight hours a day at a desk, you're gonna find these exercises really beneficial for you. So what do I mean by shoulder flexion? Well, if I turn to the side and then bring my arms above my head, it's your ability to pull the arms back without having to extend to the spine. So you wanna keep your back neutral or you can force yourself into a tail tuck and that will give you your truest form of shoulder flexion. So you wanna try and keep the arms straight and see if you can pull your arms as far back as possible. Now, if you've got good shoulder flexion, the line of your arms should be in line with your ears. If you're lacking in any shoulder flexion, your arms will be a little further forward. Now the shoulders are also linked to the thoracic part of the spine, so you'll also get a secondary benefit in helping you improve your thoracic extension. All right, let's get into the first exercise. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is determine the angle of the bench. Now, if you've got more open shoulders, you can increase the height of the bench, which will allow you to go into a lot more shoulder flexion, and you're gonna feel this a lot deeper in the belly as well. If you're struggling, then what you want to do is drop the angle of the bench down. So 45 degrees is a good starting point, and then depending on the openness of your shoulders, we can determine how low we want to go or how high we want to go. The way to determine the angle is to place yourself on the bench, try and shuffle all the way up as much as possible, and then you're going to see how far the bench goes up on the shoulder blades. Now the ideal position is to make sure that the shoulder blades are either off the edge of the bench or resting on the top edge of the bench. All right, to get into position, we're gonna grab ourselves some very light dumbbells. We're gonna start off with one kg, and if your gym has 0.5 kg, start with those first. Now we want the shoulder blades to be resting on the top edge of the bench, and then we're gonna bring our arms down to the side of the hips. We're gonna supinate the grip, and then from here, we're gonna bring our arms behind us in a semicircle and then back down to the hips. As we're doing this exercise, the focus here is to make sure that you're working with your range of motion. Now, depending on your shoulder flexion, some people may only get their arms to about this level, which is perfectly fine. And then as you start to build that range of motion up, see if you can bring the arms a little close together. The end point is to get the arms to touch each other at the back and then back down. The second thing is when you're doing this exercise is we're trying to extend as much as possible through the spine as we bring the arms behind our head. And then as we bring the arms back towards the hips, we round the back as much as possible. So we're gonna aim for three sets of eight to 10 repetitions. We also wanna make sure that our arms are fully straight when we're performing this exercise. Now, if you're finding it uncomfortable to perform the exercise with the arms straight, you probably want to reduce the weight a bit more, which also means that some people may have to perform this exercise without using dumbbells. Good. Now, there are a number of ways we can improve this exercise based on the range of motion in our shoulders. So the first one is to make sure that you're fully creating that semicircle movement as you're performing the exercise. The second one is to see if you can bring the arms down closer to the ground when we're performing the exercise. So as we go into the end range of this movement, we're gonna try and see if we can go into more spinal extension, which will allow us to bring the arms down towards the ground. Now just remember when we're doing this, we're trying to do this more through the thoracic spine and not the lumbar spine. All right, so for the second part, we wanna make sure we're performing an exercise that will help us to round the back. So as we perform exercises that require us to go into more thoracic extension, you're also gonna feel a bit of tension in the lower back. So by doing an exercise that will allow us to round the back or flex the spine, this will bring those muscles in the spine that have just been stretched back into a neutral position. Now, the best exercise I recommend for allowing the spine to go into flexion is the Jefferson Curl. So we grab ourselves a light weight, position ourselves on something that's elevated, and then start to go into the Jefferson Curl movement by bringing your chin into your chest, rounding the shoulders and also tucking the tail, and then bringing the arms down towards the ground. Now, when we're performing the top part of the Jefferson Curl, we're gonna try and make sure that the arms are as close to the body as possible. And then once you get to around knee level, you can bring the arms forward in line with your ears or eyes. Good, once you get to your end range, you're gonna pause for about two or three seconds, and then we're gonna reverse the movement.
We're gonna aim for anything between five to eight repetitions. And then on your last rep, feel free to also hold that for about 10 seconds at the end range. Okay, so try these exercises out and then let me know how they go for you. If you also have any questions about any of these exercises, please do drop them down below as well. All right, I shall see you in the next one. Done.